Greetings, my name is Chris Ralph, and this is a, a talk I give about improving your prospecting skills. You know, what is prospecting skills? It's the skill to go out and find gold. And prospecting is worthwhile. It's not just about the money. You know, I get out and get to see a lot of interesting places and experience some things that most people just never get to see because I'm out there hunting for gold. It, it's a hunt that's a, a just something that's really worthwhile and been a lot of fun for me for a lot of years. The gold is still out there. There's still really good finds being made. Honestly, uh, a friend of mine a few years back, he found a 75 ounce nugget with his metal detector and sold it for an amount that would be, you'd be able to buy a new house and a car in most uh, places in this country. So, there's still good finds being made, and I've had days where I found more than $1,000 worth of gold in the day. So, you know, it's it's well worthwhile. There's big finds being made. Uh, you have to have equipment, and we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment uh, that you need, but uh, not much, just a little bit. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about reading a river, because mostly this talk is about learning the skills of finding gold. And in all honesty, knowledge counts. It really makes a big difference. And and how successful you are. Hey, gold is exciting. It's a fun to find. This is a seven and a half ounce nugget that was found by another friend of mine. There's minerals that trick folks, uh, pyrite and mica and some other things. But uh, once you've seen enough real gold like this, you'll know how to identify it. Gold comes from various sources in the ground. Um, some places it's uh, found in gravels and that sort of thing, but the original sources are veins and fault zones, stock works and things like that. Little seams in the rock. And not everything looks like a quartz vein, but uh, some does. The gold is still out there. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. It's not easy to find. There's, there's a reason why gold is selling at the time that I'm recording this about $1,300 an ounce. It's $1,300 per ounce because it's rare. Okay? But people who know what they're doing are finding it. The good finds are still being made. Uh, prospecting, my point is, is very much like a trade. If you go to the hardware store and buy a pipe wrench, that doesn't make you a commercial plumber. Um, a journeyman commercial plumber is a journeyman plumber because of his knowledge and skills. He knows how to go and fix a problem and resolve a, recognize, uh, you know, what problems are, are visible and, and fix plumbing. So that's what makes a journeyman plumber a plumber, not the fact that he owns a wrench. So what makes a prospector that's experienced and knowledgeable is his experience and knowledge at finding gold. And this this little talk is about uh, trying to increase increase your prospecting knowledge so that you can be more successful so that you can go out there and find gold so what you know does make a very big difference you don't need to be the world's greatest expert but it's good to know some of the basics and we're going to look at some of the basics of placer gold deposits about research for finding gold deposits about seeing favorable rocks and minerals and identifying favorable rock types okay so do you want to go out and find gold like this? Um, just learn the basic craft skills of prospecting and explore, find this formula basically to, to learn what you need to do and put yourself in the right kind of place and then keep sampling and testing. If you keep testing and keep looking in, in the right places, eventually you'll be successful. Always keep searching. Again, do you want to find some gold? It's still out there for those who know how to find it and will do the work, you know, the, the, it, it's not easy. They'll do the work to, to go out there and find it. Okay, what does it take to find gold? Well, you have to be physically able to get out there. You, you have to have the, the time and, and health that, uh, that you can get out in the field. If, if your health isn't good enough, that's one reason. But if you're too busy with job and other things, well, that's going to limit you as well. But you have to be able to get out there and, and do the work. You have to have the knowledge of where gold is concentrated and you have to have access to productive ground. 
Equipment to recover the gold is another thing. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive. I have found a lot of gold with just nothing more than a pan and hand digging tools. But, hey, it's, uh, it's handy to have a metal detector and a dry washer and sluice boxes and other things. Those are all good. Um, but, uh, you know, I've found some good gold with just very simple tools. Now, you also have to have a good positive attitude and be persistent. I've known a lot of guys who convince themselves they're going to go out in the field and just make thousands of dollars, even though they don't know a darn thing about finding gold. And, of course, they all fail. And they get out there and they find that it's, hey, you have to know what you're doing. And, and this isn't easy. And so they give up and, and they don't find much of anything. So, you know, for quitters and people with a bad attitude, this is a, a tough road to go. So there's different kinds of placer deposits, and placer is the, the gold that's loose in the in gravel and dirt and that sort of thing. Um, residual is a kind that uh, forms near veins. It's just where it starts to come out of the hard rock outcrop. Alluvial with an E is hillside as it's working its way down the hillside to a stream in the bottom or some sort of stream or river. Alluvial is those stream or rivers. Now, bench is where, bench placers are where the river cut down and, and actually strands and leaves bits of gravel up above the current river flow. And then beach, or when it, the, the fine gold makes its way all the way out to the ocean and uh, there's a special techniques for uh, capturing beach gold. So here's a little diagram about residual and alluvial placers. Residual placers are uh, those that are in place or at very near the source. They haven't traveled far. So this diagram shows a quartz vein. And so there at the outcrop, you would have uh, residual gold around the outcrop of the vein. The alluvial placers with an E are placers that are working their way down to the stream. And then alluvial with an A is the actual stream gravels themselves. Alluvial placers, like I say, are in the stream. Erosion brings down placer gold into these streams, and gold seeks to escape fast water flows and get stuck in the slow moving waters. A gold concentrates only at certain places in a stream. One of the things that's most important for you to remember is that gold in stream gravels is spotty. There's a few places that are rich, but the vast majority are barren or very nearly barren. You want to find those rich places. That's the skill of the prospector is to be able to recognize the place where gold naturally concentrates and then go there and recover it. Now one of the things that's important to remember is what streams look like when we're out prospecting. There's no gold moving around when the streams like this. This is what a stream might look like on a summer day when I was out prospecting. It's pretty, it's beautiful. In fact, this is actually a fall day because you can see the trees turning yellow a little bit. Uh, but this is what a stream would look like. And we, when we try to read a river and figure out where the gold is being deposited, we need to remember that the stream looks nothing like this when gold is moving. This is a summer thing, and there, there's no gold moving here. This is what it looks like when the stream has gold moving. Yeah, gold, occurs, gold deposition occurs during floods. When a stream is rolling along like a freight train and giant boulders are rolling around on the bottom of the creek and uh, it's the kind of uh, stream that if you stepped one step in it, we'd be washed away and killed in a matter of minutes. So th this kind of uh, environment is very dangerous to get involved in. But you can see here, this is the type of environment. This is what a river looks like when uh, when gold is moving and that's what you should envision uh, when you're out there trying to figure out the places where gold will get caught well this is what the river looks like when gold is moving so in picking a place along the stream to dig or detect you got to think about what the river might look like when it was at full flood stage so reading a river places to look for concentrations of gold natural concentrations where the gold is, is going to get stuck. Um, you know, gravel bars, bedrock outcrops, boulders, tributary streams, 
bends in the flow, river widening, river slowing, in other words, a slowing meaning like a change in grade. Um, these are all classic places to find accumulations of placer gold. You can see in this diagram, this was basically like a model river that the Geological Survey of Canada did some years back. And they made this model river and they put water through it. And then they added in some heavy material called galena. That's a, a lead mineral. And then some garnet sand. And garnet is uh, um, basically a little bit heavier than regular sand, um, but not super heavy. And then quartz sand is, uh, of course, light. So they put it in. And you can see that on the downstream side uh, of the inside bends, there were accumulations. And in fact, the sharper the bend, the more the accumulation. And inside, on the well, you can see on the sharpest bend, you have a big accumulation of the heavy galena, which represents gold, and then garnet sand inside of that, which would represent fine gold. Um, they had a couple of uh, what they call quartz or quartzite dikes, ledges that crossed the stream, and there were minor accumulations around them as well, just where the water slowed. And then they have a tributary stream that comes in, and uh, you have an inside bend bar that forms near the tributary stream, but right at the mouth of the tributary stream where it meets the bigger river, uh, there's an accumulation there too, and that's one that a lot of guys overlook. It's where the, the gold coming down the tributary stream hit the bigger stream and the bigger stream is usually much slower the tributary streams are steeper and the water moves faster so as soon as the gold hit that slower water the gold dropped out so you get an accumulation a little uh, uh, a little patch a little um, pay streak that forms right at the mouth of the tributary and then they have uh, an island which would be uh, something equivalent to like a big boulder or just an, a sandbar island that you see along the edges of that it, there's a uh, an accumulation there interesting model because this shows uh, some of the ideas behind where you might find a uh, gold accumulating naturally and it, it gives you an idea sufficient that uh, you should be able to use this when you go out to a real river so let's take a look at another thing Here's a finding gold behind a boulder or other obstruction. Boulders and other obstructions offer a place to, for the gold to get stuck in quieter waters out of the faster water flows. They're good places to search for gold. Most people know about this. I've kind of done this drawing, which shows the boulder and then the, the zone where fine gold might get uh, uh, deposited and where medium gold and then the coarsest gold. It, the further out, the closer to the fast stream water the uh, the coarser the gold that will get deposited. So keep this in mind and we're going to go to a slide that shows you what this looks like in real life. So here is a big boulder obstruction. This is not flood stage. This is just a time when the water, it's a fast spring runoff is all it is. But it shows how behind this big boulder in the middle of the stream and that boulder is as big as a, a delivery truck and you can see that behind it there's quiet green water whereas all the water around it is the fast white water and literally if you could see it and look at it you'd see that the the quiet water behind it is kind of v-shaped as as it was shown in the last slide and sure enough behind this boulder there were accumulations of gold now the best gold is often caught in crevices and when you actually have bedrock like this, where the, the bedrock um, catches the gold, there's cracks and that sort of thing, and the gold gets down in those cracks and it just uh, can't get out. So the best gold is often found in crevices, in bedrock crevices. But not always. Sometimes there's such a thing as they call a uh, false bedrock, that we have a heavy level layer of clay, that doesn't get moved when uh, when the stream is at flood stage and the gold will deposit on top of that layer of heavy clay because it, it'll be a false bedrock. So 
And there's also some fine flaky gold that gets moved around and deposited on gravel bars in the right locations. So keep sampling, keep trying some of these different areas and, and you can be successful. Now, gold gets caught in crevices and here is an actual dirt clod that was taken out of a crevice. It was a, the dirt clod was found with a metal detector and you can see the, on, the, on either side is where the, the walls of the rock were in this crack. And yet, look at the nugget. If you look at the center of it there, it's just filled with little nuggets. And in fact, uh, when the guy broke this up, I think there was something around a quarter of an ounce of gold in this dirt clod. It was wedged and hidden, and you couldn't see it very easily, but the metal detector said there was something there, and we popped it out, and sure enough, there's a, a pretty impressive little dirt clod that's got a lot of nice gold in it. Now bench gravels can be very productive too. This is basically a, a bit of gravel that as the river cut down, you know, as it erodes it, its uh, the bed downward and downward, um, there are get to be bits of gravel off to the side that now get stranded as, as the river cuts down and the river no longer flows here. But you can still see by looking at this picture the rounded rocks that uh, were river gravel. They were gravel in the river at one time, but now they're stranded high and dry. And this material that's in place, you can know that it's never been mined before. No, if there's material in place on a gravel bar like this, it's virgin material that's never been mined. And these are good kind of places to look for gold. Now, desert drainages can look very different from flowing streams. And sometimes, you know, it, it's a little bit tougher to figure out where the gold is going to go. But sometimes where the stream flattens out a little bit uh, will be a good place for the gold to drop out of the flow. But uh, desert streams are, are a lot different than, than mountain ones. You can just see by looking at them. Now, reading a river or a deposit... A reading a river or other type of gold deposit is knowing where to look at a different loca given location. You know, one of the hardest things, you go out to an area where there's gold and, uh, you know, where do you actually look? You know, where, where should you actually be digging or metal detecting or whatever? Um, that's the skill of prospecting is knowing those spots, recognizing those spots to look. And the knowledge of and that skill is based on learning or research field experience. You know, actually, of course, the, the very best uh, uh, teacher is actually finding some gold. Because when you find some gold, you know, it tells you where the gold is. But one of the things that's important to still remember is the gold concentrates in a few rich spots. And most of the gravel along any gold-bearing stream are pretty low grade. What you want is to find those rich spots and try to get those best places because that's where you're going to be having your most success at finding gold. Now, doing research to find locations of where to prospect, finding the right location is kind of the toughest part. And there's no single right way to do research. A lot of different guys have different techniques or things that they look at. Of course, there's a lot of information these days on the Internet. Now, going to the same old patches, the same old areas where you've worked before, uh, the problem is, is that the gold doesn't grow back. A lot of times, you know, some more crumbs or a few little pieces might be found, but it's much better to explore new places. Uh, and it's a lot more work, a lot harder, but uh, if you're successful in a new place that you haven't already taken the best gold out of, um, the chances are that you'll be doing a lot better. Now, location books that like tell you where uh, you know gold districts are, or where gold was found in your state, um, they're just the start of the journey. There's a, a lot more to read and explore and, and then do your homework and look at maps. And then once you've gotten a good idea, then get out into the field and actually go exploring. Here's a couple of books um, about gold districts. This tells about gold uh Places where gold has been found in Arizona. That's gold placers and plastering in Arizona. And then here's another book that was written called Placer Mining in Nevada. It's places where gold nuggets and, and gold dust was found in the state of Nevada. 
there's books like this for other states, for Utah and New Mexico. Uh, there's a Gold Districts of California book that's very helpful. So there's a, a lot of information that's out there for the guys that are willing to work and willing to do their homework. You can, can learn what you need to know. Now, clubs are a great thing. A lot of guys uh, that don't want to do quite as much research maybe just figure they'll join a club and, and uh, get access. And then, oh, that's a pretty good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's a lot of gold clubs out there now, prospecting clubs, and, and they provide good access to gold-bearing areas. Um, there's folks in there to help you learn if you're new. And clubs are always looking for people to help out. Uh, my experience is that 10% of the people in a club do 90% of the work as far as keeping the club running. So if you're going to join a club, jump in and help. Jump in and participate. Do, you, do your share. Now, gold nuggets, even in the desert or dry country, um, tend to form in groups. If the geological conditions are right for one nugget to be there, well, then the, probably the geological conditions are right for a number of nuggets to be there. This actually is a nugget patch from Australia. And uh, literally, the guy who first found this patch, he came in with a metal detector and found more than 30 ounces. Some people came in after him, and they uh, got a couple ounces. And I came in even a few years later and sniffed around the crumbs, and I think I got close to a quarter ounce, even myself. So, you know, there's a, a lot of uh, places where you can find gold. And this is just an unusual looking patch. Now you can see in the foreground there's some spots where the gravel has been pushed aside, little circles where or ovals where um, it, the gravels have been cleaned and pushed to one side or the other. Those were all spots where nuggets were found. Interestingly enough about this patch too is you can see the white rock in, in a little bit in the midground. Uh, that white rock is quartz. And actually, there were no nuggets found over in and among the quartz cobbles and quartz pieces over there. It was more in uh, distant from the, the quartz vein, right where I'm standing, that the, the nuggets were found. Now, favorable rock types. That's one of the interesting concepts that uh, experience uh, prospectors learn, is that there's a host rock for all types of, of in place rock that uh, where you have veins and and other sources of, of rock shear zones uh, that form that where the gold is is coming out of the gold is eroding out of these favorable rock types and it can vary a lot from one location to another what the host rock is for a place in california uh, might be different in nevada and uh, in nevada it's different than alaska or montana so you have to learn what is the favorable host rock for your area because there's some variability. Now the placer mining books will tell you what the host rock is or where the the rock where the gold is coming from but very often the favorable rock type is what's called a foliated metamorphic rock. I remember reading a study not too long ago about uh, 17 of the world's largest placer regions and 17 of 17 were associated with some sort of schist slate or phyolite. And these are all rocks that break into flat slabby pieces. I'll show you a picture in just a second. And while these are common gold bearing rocks, there are plenty of exceptions. There's places where there's good gold nuggets and there's just not even any of this rock in the area. So you have to learn what's favor what the favorable type is for the area you are prospecting in. So here's some of those foliated rocks. You can see they just naturally break into little flat pieces. And uh, this is actually in a gold bearing area in the state of Nevada. Now there's a lot of quartz veins out there and uh, a skilled prospector learns to recognize quartz veins because they're worth prospecting and checking out. Um, sometimes these give rise to some good nuggets that can be found. But the bottom line is you got to get those boots on the ground. If you're not out there actually looking, um, you're not finding. You know, mining equipment uh, being stored in a closet or garage gathers only dust. So get out there and explore that great outdoors. Your discovery, your gold discovery, is waiting.
The gold is still out there to be found. This is a set of nuggets that I found at an area in California and uh, found uh, more more gold at that spot, a lot more gold since this picture was taken. Always remember to keep on moving and keep trying new areas. Don't settle for just a few specs. Keep on prospecting. Part of the adventure is exploring and finding new places. So get out there. You know, will you do what it takes to get your share of this kind of thing? It's not that impossible. Now, if you want more information about prospecting, you want to better your skills, improve your skills about finding gold, um, here's the book to, to do it with. I, I wrote a book called Fistful of Gold, and it has all kinds of information about how to find your gold, find your own gold. It's a, an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about prospecting, how to pan, sluice, metal detect, dry wash, um, gold geology, how to read maps, how to put yourself on the gold. And uh, it's available now on Amazon. All you have to do is go to Amazon and uh, enter uh, Fistful of Gold by Chris Ralph, and I guarantee it'll come up. Check out some of the comments. It's really highly rated. The people who've had this book think very highly of it. And if you buy it, you will too. Um, for more information too, I have a web page. And uh, my web page is at nevadaoutbackgems.com, prospect, chrisprospect.htm. That's the URL for it. And there's all kinds of stuff here, um, places about information, adventures, uh, how to build your own equipment, all about placer mining, reference pages. There's just a lot of information about prospecting and finding your gold, your own gold, both in the, uh, in the mountains, in the pines, and in the desert as well. So if you like this presentation and you want to learn more about finding your own gold, um, you know, I've, I've got more uh, gold and silver and gemstone videos coming, uh, both as far as these slide presentations and live action videos in the field. So click on the subscribe button and then click the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff because more stuff is coming. Hit the like button as well and feel free to ask any uh, questions or comment on the video down below. And thanks for listening and best of luck to you and all your prospecting adventures. Hope to see you out there.